all you Eutherians, the central ancestral Eutherians, and the Cretaceous and early Eutherians, all the features that we share. Eutherian mammals are also known as placental mammals. Unfortunately, the definition of placenta is a difficult one since, if one were to refer to the interaction of maternal and fetal cells which allow for exchanges of materials, then there are a lot of fish which have placentas and amphibians and reptiles, and the number of tissues which can contribute to placentas would include tissues from gills, or the pericardium, or anal structures, or a host of other structures which one can find in certain fish, amphibians, or reptiles. Marsupials are technically placentals in that they do form a placenta using a chorion, but the majority of them use blood vessels from the yolk sac. The type of placenta found in the placental mammals, or eutherian mammals, involves not only the fetal cells from the chorion, but also blood vessels from the allantois. So it is properly called a chorioallantoic placenta because it gets contributions from these two extra embryonic membranes, the chorion and the allantois. The type of placenta found in the eutherian or placental mammals allows fetuses to develop inside the uterus of the mother for a much longer period of time and therefore they can be born in a much more advanced state. As an example for comparison, a kangaroo's infants may only be the size of bees and must complete development in a pouch. And so when placental mammals are born, they are in an advanced state. Some are actually even capable of walking shortly after birth. This distinguishes them from the other groups of mammals.